Do you want to know what's involved when you move countries and you have to actually financially emigrate? Did you even know that that's a thing? <laughs> Stay tuned because more of that coming all your way in today's episode. Hey there guys and thank you so much for coming for yet another episode of Shamini TV where today we will be telling you all about what's involved in financial immigration and how you can actually move your money between South Africa and Australia. Do you do it yourself? Should you get somebody to help you with it? Hmm, many questions that we can un unpack and so I have partnered up today to bring you the gent from Currency Assist, who is a South African based company, and they are Forex brokers who have been doing this process for many years. They will be sharing all their nitty bitty detail about what you should and shouldn't know in our short chat. But before we do that, have you subscribed to our channel yet? Go on, I'm waiting. You can just like hit that red button below and subscribe, and that will be your passport to knowing that when I next release another educational video about moving to Australia and what's involved and what kind of tips can you get to get your bum here as soon as possible, then you will be sure to be notified. I've helped thousands of people get what they want in life and to make their life just that little bit better, if not a lot better by actually moving countries, which is a great thing. And I'm so pleased that I'm able to help people with such a big thing in their lives. But I would also love to help you two today. So stay tuned. Let's go to the interview now with Divan and Ifghir from Currency Assist. Thank you so much for joining me today, gents, all the way from, is it cold or is it sunny South Africa at the moment? Uh, from my side, I'm here in the deep north, uh, in Rustenburg at the moment, visiting some family. Uh, not, so, not so cold at all, but I hear the place of origin where Divan is at the moment, where I come from, it's very hot, very cold and very wet. Um, but from this side, we can't complain about the weather. Divan, there from your side? Thanks, Ifkia. Um, Yeah, so I mean, we, I'm, I'm based in Plettenberg Bay, and we normally have about, you know, five days of winter here in the Garden Route every year. Um, and we've been having it now. So yeah, it's been, it's been an interesting <laughs> few days. We've, we've actually had some gale force wind yesterday. Um, so the whole town was in, you know, up, up, up and about trying to fix the electricity and yeah it's been an interesting time but glad to be here thanks guys it's yeah. lovely to have you and you know that south africans who moved to australia or are considering moving or just even south africans who know people who are in australia and who would like to send money to them often have this burning question about how do they send their money over? And once they are here, how do they financially migrate or immigrate, as we like to call it? So thank you for sharing that information with us today. I would like to uh, formally introduce Efria and Divan, who are both very informed gents and are going to just help us understand and get to grips on how we do these things that really helps us get our money into Australia or out of South Africa and get our tax um, position officially correct when we do leave the country. So Divan, if you wouldn't mind introducing first your company and then yourself and, um, oh, sorry, Ifria, <laughs> introducing yourself and then um, Divan as well and just explaining to us who you are and what you guys do. Okay, cool. Thank you so much for that introduction. From my side, uh, we are Currency Assist. We are a international money transfer specialist. So I'm going to keep it short as it is important for you to have a financial advisor to understand your insurance policies and investment. It is the same important to have a Forex broker when you are dealing with two currencies or multiple currencies and you need to transfer the money. So in the market of today, there's a lot of chance takers, scammers. So it's very important for you to associate yourself with somebody that is licensed, first of all, that's got a lot of years of experience and or already helping a few thousand clients. So on that note, I'm going to introduce Divan, who is the head of operations at Currency Assist, and he's honestly the most informed guy that I know in this industry. So yeah, Divan, take it away. 
Thanks. Thanks, FK. You, yeah, you, you basically said it all. Yeah. So just real quickly, Currency Assist is an FSP, a financial services provider, specifically relating to foreign exchange. So we assist individuals and companies, um, you know, to open up bank accounts in South Africa and to, you know, offer them a boutique style service when it comes to moving funds into or out of South Africa. Um, there's obviously a lot more pertaining to the movement of funds, but um, as a short introduction, yeah, that's what we do on a daily basis. And we've been doing it for just over a decade now. Um, and uh, yeah, we enjoy seeing the South African culture all, all around the world. That's great to hear. So are you guys online as a business or is it a physical business that people go to? Yeah, so that's a great question, Samurai. So we, um, we've got, we head office in the Garden Route in Plettenberg Bay. We've got mm -hmm. a, a national fruit, footprint in South Africa. But the reality is we do not get to meet 90% of our clients. Um, our clients are generally sitting all over the world. So absolutely, our processes and our interaction with clients are 90% digital. Um, but we do, we do have the classic boardroom and, and you know, welcome people to come in and, and have a cup of coffee and talk about Forex. Absolutely. Well, that's good. So you could do the personal in-person kind of thing, but um, you know, these days with COVID, most businesses are run online anyway. And how wonderful that we have the internet that we can actually talk while yeah. I'm in Australia and you guys are over in South Africa. So if you don't mind, Devan, if you can give us a breakdown of what financial immigration means. And for the typical South African who have moved countries and ideally specifically in Australia, what do they need to be on the lookout for? What, what's involved with financial immigration? Yeah, so financial immigration in the last two to three years has been such a um, controversial term. You know, it's not a word that's in, in legislation. It's not, a, it's not a physical thing. It's an overarching word describing, you know, from a South African context, an individual wanting to unhook himself from the South African financial system. So it could mean that you, you know, you formalize your immigration through the Reserve Bank, a process that no longer exists. We'll unpack that in a, in a few minutes, I'm sure. Um, but so, so there's sort of your Reserve Bank focus, and then there is your tax focus with the South African Revenue Services. Um, and so, so financial immigration in, in that sense just means, you know, you're unhooking yourself from the South African financial system. You're saying you're done with South Africa from a financial perspective, you're moving on. Mm. Um, and there's a few boxes you need to tick. But I mean, the, the fear inducing or, um, you know, concept in the marketplace that you need to do this. And if you don't do this, you'll be liable to all these double taxations. Um, you'll be liable to, you know, you, you won't ever get your funds out of South Africa. There's a lot of fear mongering. And um, mm -hmm. I think it's important to just sort of understand what it is. And, you know, as per your financial situation, define whether it's, it's needed or not. Mm -hmm. um, so and, so and, walk us through that, if you don't mind, that like, the, what are the concerns that people are being said? Like, if you don't do this or if you, sh you know, what are those daily kind of things that people hear that, that concern them and which is why they need to get in touch with you, gents? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, maybe, maybe first, if I, if I can, Jim, and I let me, let me just explain what the old process was for financial mm. immigration and then sort of what it, what it looks like today. Yeah, so go for it. From the first, from the first of March um, this year, um, the formalized, formalizing your immigration through the Reserve Bank fell away. You know, it used to be a process mm -hmm. where you, you've completed a bunch of application forms, um, you listed all your, your assets and liabilities, you got supporting documentation for, for all your South African based assets. Um, and then you formalize your immigration financially with the Reserve Bank. And they then from that day that you've completed an application and it's been submitted to the Reserve Bank, they then rubber stamp that. And then you were regarded as a, South Af as a non-resident South African, still a South African citizen, but a non-resident for financial surveillance um, purposes. So then you took, that, you took that application and you went to the South African Revenue Services and you informed them of, 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 of the process that you've just completed. And you basically get a, an immigration tax clearance for assets still in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And all those assets would then be deemed blocked. And you would have to open a specific immigration blocked account. And, you know, through that channel, externalize your funds to wherever you were based. Right. So that was the, that was the old process. Mm -hmm. So in explaining that, it's clear that, you know, the, uh, the responsibility was on the head of the South African Reserve Bank or the banks that they were dealing with, which are referred to as authorized dealers. So, um, so that process fell away completely. So then from the 1st of March this year, it's now 
you know, that whole responsibility has just been taken off the shoulders of the Reserve Bank and placed on the South African Revenue Services SARS. So now, commonly in the marketplace, you, you do what's called a tax immigration, where you inform SARS of your intentions to immigrate. You work with a tax practitioner. Um, we do have some on our team. Which that's a shameless plug, I must say. But uh, <laughs> but anyways, yeah. So so you go you go through that process, you know, from a SARS perspective, and then you um, you formalize your immigration through that manner, um, and unhook yourself from a SARS perspective. Mm -hmm. So in saying that, you need to be you need to be sure that you you're not returning to South Africa. You you want to be deemed a tax resident in the country in the country where you're living. In this case, if you if you're living in Australia, you're working there, you're tax resident there. It mm. makes sense for you to you know go to SARS, unhook yourself, um, and get a tax immigration done so that you don't have to you know be obligated to comp to every year fill in those you know those zero filing tax returns and mm. and still have that administrative burden. Um, but you'll always be paying tax in South Africa if you if you earn an income in South Africa. That's clear. right. Um, yeah. So, 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 in which cases would people not be able to financially immigrate? Let's say you immigrated to Australia with your family, and you don't live in South Africa anymore. When are you eligible to to financially immigrate, and when are you not? Like, you know, obviously, if you're still paying taxes in South Africa, but can you give us some examples of cases how that would be the situation? Yeah, ab absolutely. So let's let's take a, a very classic example, if I, for lack of a better word. You know, a family immigrates to Australia. The, the, the husband the husband got a job there. He's working. The you know, the kids are in school. Um, they they sold everything in South Africa. They don't have everything. They don't have anything left here. Um, but yet they you know they still need to file a tax return every year. They, in South Africa, they they haven't informed South Africa of the the fact that they've immigrated. Where you know, like I said a year ago, they would have done that through the Reserve Bank. Now they simply you simply go to SARS. For for that type of individual, it makes sense because you you give SARS proof that you you're now a tax resident um, in the country where you're staying, i.e. Australia, and um, you inform them of 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 the same, and then you regard it as a tax non-resident, right? So that's one reason. Mm -hmm. That's that's one scenario where you want to do that. The other one is if you show SARS that you're a tax non-resident for three consecutive years, right? So um, you're out of the country for three years, you've tax immigrated when you left, or you've backdated a tax immigration, mm -hmm. um, and you've, you've, you're deemed to be a tax resident um, in, in Australia and um, a non-tax resident in South Africa for three consecutive years, you, you, you then become eligible to um, externalize any untouched retirement annuities or policies in South Africa. So that's the other reason why people want to do that, right? Mm -hmm. And Previously, you could have done that through a formal, formal immigration through the Reserve Bank, even before, not before, but even at the time of you leaving, you could have engaged in that process. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that's definitely one reason to do it. A, a reason maybe not to do it is if, you, if you've got very complex financial structures in South Africa, it might not make sense for you to just, you know, um, trigger any potential capital gains, deemable cap, uh, disposable capital gains, tax, um, you know, responsibilities, um, and, and anything like that. So if you've got complex, complex financial structures in South Africa, mm. um, I wouldn't necessarily just go and say, hey, inform SARS of, of the same. You definitely then want to you know, speak to a master tax practitioner that's, that specializes in, in mm. tax immigration. So what are the pros and the cons of immigrating financially? Why would you suggest that somebody do it? So... Again, if you if you want to unhook from the South African financial system, that is the way to do it. So you know, a lot of people just want to they they've immigrated. They love to just tick all the boxes to be sure that they you know they're not going to be receiving a tax bill ten years down the line. So it's it's peace of mind is definitely one reason. Mm. That's 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 the answer there. And then secondly, I mean. Um, Another another reason to do it is the fact that you've got a retirement annuity. Let's say you're 45 or you're 50 years old. You need to wait another five or 10 years to encash a retirement annuity in South Africa, mm. pay the tax on it and get the funds to where you want it to go. Um, if you've tax immigrated, you can start that process, you know, before a policy reaches its maturity. So that's Good. another not, another very important reason to do it. Um yeah, but generally it's it's the mm. peace of mind, and um, yeah, people often ask me then. So, Divan, do I lose my citizenship? You know, because I don't want to lose my South African citizenship. Mm. And the reality is, you don't. You don't, right? Mm. And that's why I like the fact that 
um, you know, the regulators have, has moved the responsibility to SARS. So it's become a total financial um, move um, and, and informing the revenue services of the same. And so they can, if they, for some reason, decided to move back to South Africa at a future point in time, they can then resume their financial position with SARS, of course. You can, you can, you can then come back and say, listen, I'm, I'm going to be a tax resident here now again, and, and you can continue, right? And that's a brilliant point that you're bringing up, because two years ago, if you wanted to do that, you know, you, you did a formal immigration through the Reserve Bank, and now, you know, things didn't work out for you in Australia, now you came back. It was deemed a, a failed immigration, which, which created an, an admin, you know, burden for yourself because now the Reserve Bank sees you as a non-resident. You have to become a resident again. You have to reverse the process. Where now with SARS, it's not as complicated. Mm, mm, that's great. What's the typical kind of time that it takes for a person from when they start this process until they can, as you say, have that peace of mind of being financially immigrated? Yeah, so um, again, that to a large degree does, does absolutely depend on your um, financial situation and mm -hmm. the complexities, uh, you know, with the structures you have in South Africa. But I would say for, for you know, your typical guy immigrated, he's, 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 he had one job in South Africa, moved overseas, he's working there. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, been, it's been taken down from, um, from weeks to, to um, from months to weeks. So you're looking at a... a, oh, okay. a Two or three, four, maybe maybe a month to you know mm. to be tax immigrated, depending on some um, you know documentation required. There's one or two things that you would actually need from the country where you mm. are deemed to be a tax resident now. So that was going to be my question. What are the kind of documentation that people will need to get in place before they can start the process? Well, first of all, you you need to be tax compliant with SARS. So if you've got any sort of outstanding files, pay up. That's, <laughs> well, yeah, no, either be, <laughs> either pay up or you know just just get it up to date. And that usually in South Africa means there, there there's some payment involved. You're quite right. And then um, a certificate of residency. So that's something you get at your um you know your revenue services in in Australia, whatever where, wherever you you're residing, um, and it's basically a certificate saying that you're a tax resident of that country and SARS right. needs that as, as proof. Um, and then, I mean, it used to be complicated. Um, I keep, keep saying that, but the reality is now, if you work with a master tax practitioner of who there's, you know, there's a few in South Africa that's excellent. Mm. Um, you know, they, they set you up, they take you through, um, you give them a power of attorney. That's one, that's another document you need from, um, you need to supply. And then you just go through a process. I mean, they'll, they'll walk you through a questionnaire and, um, make sure you tick all the boxes and it, it really is that simple i mean I've, I've spoken to a few clients that have just done it themselves it, it really is easy enough to do permitted you can you can get can get to communicate with SARS. now tell us about using a forex broker what is a forex broker firstly for those of our viewers who are not sure and then why should somebody need to use a forex broker to do their financial immigration yeah obviously um Obviously, a, a great question, Shamanai. So, I would, I would definitely say, first of all, what a forex broker is, is somebody that um, you know that specialises in foreign exchange, and um, you know, it's it's somebody that assists clients to move money, and, I mean, the best the best definition I can I can um, come up with when I think of of our industry and our business is, you know, it's like. I'm I'm not that old, but my my parents tell me that banking in the 70s and 80s was a was a pleasant experience. I mean, you had your personal banker, and you went to them, and you um, you know you did your business, yeah. and that was it. And you you knew who you were talking to. So a forex broker is 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 a little bit that type of person, right? It's a it's it's the type of person that you get to talk to when when it comes to moving your money internationally. You you get to have that personal boutique service. Yeah. Um, which which is very valuable, yeah. But essentially, it's somebody that assists um, an individual or a company to move funds, um, um, you know, from one currency to another. And somebody who's really clever and has studied many, many years. <laughs> 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 and talking about which, so if people then decide to use a forex broker like yourself to help them with financial immigration, what are the kind of fees involved, Divan? Yeah, so with with the with the financial immigration, um, you know, I, I've 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 mentioned a few times the, the the role a master tax practitioner would play in this, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it would basically just be their fee. We as a as a, as forex brokers would love to assist individuals, you know, when they have funds to move to open an account and and move move um, their funds for them. 
Um, and there's obviously a cost pertaining to that transaction. But, you know, the, the old way of doing a financial immigration would have cost you tens of thousands of rands through a forex broker like, like ourselves or you know, through a company that specialized in financial immigration. But these days, I mean, it's, it's a consultation with the master tax practitioner. It's, it's getting, every, getting everything together. Again, if your situation is complex, you're looking at you know, a few thousand rand. Um, if not, it's, it, it could really be a very cheap and quick process. And so that, that's the costs of using somebody. But tell us about the money that can be saved by using uh, professional people like yourself. Yeah. So, so in, in terms of the, you know, the, moving, the moving of money, it's, it's, uh, it's, such, a, it's such an interest, in, interesting industry because the, 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 the single biggest thing that people don't get to see with foreign exchange is transparency, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, you're moving, you know, you're converting some South African rands into Australian dollars and you're getting an exchange rate, but you don't really know what you're paying. Yeah, there's a little, you know, an admin fee associated to moving funds through a bank or whatever, but you don't mm-hmm. actually know what you're being paid. And the, mm-hmm. the reality is that people are, you know, being charged a lot of money to, yeah. to, to convert funds and they're not seeing it. So, I mean, I would, I would say the biggest, the biggest reason and the biggest saving through, through using a, a foreign exchange specialist or money transfer company would, um, is, is the fact you get that transparency, right? So let me, mm-hmm. let me explain this by way of an example quickly. So you, you're sitting in South Africa, you've got a million rand that you need to convert to, um, to Australian dollar. Let's just assume for the sake of this example that the exchange rate is 10 to 1, mm-hmm. right? So... I keep on using 10 to one in my mind all the time, whether it's it's absolutely the, the easiest example, right? Even though I'm in the financial industry, I I have to say that a calculator is my best friend. So 10 to one um, is is a a method I enjoy, but anyways, yeah. So, um, so let's just say it's 10 to one. You've got a million Rand and you want to send that overseas, right? You call the bank and they say, Hi, I am You um, you want to convert some funds? It's fine. We can give you you know ten to one. So you convert that. Um, the reality is the bank, the, the the rate the bank gave you was ten to one, right? Mm. But there's there's something called an interbank rate or a mid market rate, which is the exchange rate without anybody's fees on, not the mm. bank's fee, not the bank's margin, and that would have been nine fifty in this example. So that means for every Australian dollar that you purchase, you paid a 50 cent premium, a 50 rand, pre, a 50 mm. um, rand cent pre- premium, right? Mm. So, so that, that works out to, you know, in this scenario to about 3% of the value of what you want to transfer roughly. So that means if you moved a million rand, it cost you 30,000 rand that you didn't know you were Gosh. paying because, wow. because you were paying, you were buying it at a premium exchange rate. Does that make mm. sense? Yeah, yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, so, so in, in contrast, you know, a financial, um, um, an, an FSP like us that specialize in international money transfer, we also open an account for our client, for you, at a, a bank. Let's call it the same bank, right? We, mm. we, we've got banking providers and we open an account for you there. But we have that this model with thousands of clients. So we get to do large volumes in transactions. So what we then do is we, you know, the bank looks at us as a client at the end of the day, but we've transacted, you know, let's call it 10 billion Rand. Um, yeah. So they, they're obviously giving us an exchange rate, not nine, not at 950, you know, mm-hmm. but at nine, at, at 998. And so mm-hmm. they're only making one or two cents on us. We show you that rate and we add four or five cents on that. So you, you get, you get a rate that, you know, that's only slightly marked up. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and and the, in that regard, there's a massive saving, right? So yeah. when when I when I express it in percentages to clients, I you know always say it's it's zero point five percent of the value of what you want to transfer compared to the bank's typical two to five percent. Oh wow! So there's, a, there's a massive saving mm. in the, that. So yeah, I know that was a mouthful. I, I, I yeah. it made sense. Uh, no, it <laughs> does certainly. I can do a lot, many more other things with that two percent that I'm saving rather than giving it to a bank. You know, I can think of going for my hair or going for a nice dinner or many of them, depending on. You know, it's just um, <laughs> people need to realize that it's their money that they're just handing over to somebody else leaving, because leaving. they didn't really do their due diligence to find out where is the best place to go. Absolutely. And they're leaving it on the table. That's, that's mm. essentially what it is. And the bank's saying, thanks very much. We'll take it. And tell me the last thing. Are there any rogue agents out there or how would people know that they're using a, an affiliated FSP, financial service provider? 
Yeah, that's actually a great question. Yeah, so there's a lot of people there that that act independently and want to, you know, want to assist you, especially when it comes to cash. So stay away mm. from cash if you can. <laughs> you know, when it comes to international money transfers. But um, you, the best way is the Financial Sector Conduct Authority in South Africa is sort of our, you know, our regulatory body that that enforces the the financial acts in South Africa. So on their website, you can go and and, and search for companies. So it's important to make sure that the company that you're working with is licensed. Um, luckily, the the good thing is, you know, you won't be able to to have a, a good solid banking partner relationship if you're not regulated and and licensed as as a financial services provider. Mm. But um, yeah, there's definitely some guys out there, you know, acting or, or giving advice when they're not supposed to give advice. Um, they might be regulated, but yeah, be, be, be careful of people wanting to tell you when's the best time to trade. This is what the RAND's going to do. This is where the dollar's going um, <laughs> because nobody's got that crystal ball. And if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true because that's the other thing that we found. People always just want to go for the cheapest option and that's not always the safest or the legit option to do. So, um, yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking your time today and explaining to us a little bit of, you know, this whole process, which for people who are not financially, shall I say motivated, let's say financially interested every day um, and, and breaking it down and making it for us a bit more uh, chewable so that we know what's lying ahead when we do move countries. Um, and also if we just want to send money from the one country to the other, going through you guys or any other company that's similar or people who are registered with the appropriate certifications. That's very important that you actually save money by using a, a, a Forex broker instead of, um, yes, going through the traditional old way that you might have used the bank. So appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, so I any time it was, it's been a pleasure talking with you and trying to explain a few concepts. Obviously, there's a, there's a lot more that we can talk about. So um, <laughs> any, any time, really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thanks so much. If you wanted to send money back to your family in South Africa when you've already moved to Australia, this is a very good way to go about it because you can save so much and make sure that you use legit people you don't want to be giving your money to a rogue agent or a wannabe person who's just going to run off with your money so make sure that you use legit people and in the comments below what we want to know from you is what are those burning questions that we didn't cover in today's interview potentially are there anything that you have not fully grasped or would like to know more about Put it in the comments below and we would love to be able to potentially bring you another video like a follow-up if we find that there is a, a big interest in finding out more about how to do this thing. Now, clearly, if you're watching this video, you have started considering making the big, big move to Down Under. And if you haven't yet thought about all the steps involved, then this one obviously has now just been added to your list of things to do or to do maybe once you're here. Or maybe to keep it in mind, because when you're planning your move, there are always little bits and pieces of documentation that you might need to grab or get in order before you actually leave South Africa. Make sure that you hit the like button on this video, because if you've made it to the end, I'm sure that you have found it valuable in some shape or form. It really goes a long way in helping my channel just to reach more people and, you know, make somebody else's life just that little bit better or a lot <laughs> actually if they are going to move to australia and if we can help them through that process that would be amazing so hit the like button subscribe and you know what share it with a friend because surely there would be somebody you know that either lives in australia and who might potentially still have to financially immigrate or who is considering moving to Australia because they might just be really thankful that you have brought them this information. And then also come back next week because we're going to bring you some more valuable tips and advice. And so make sure, please, that you follow us on Facebook, go to our website, check out all the stuff that's on offer there because I bet you there will be something that you haven't actually seen yet. Have you seen our latest from the horse's mouth interview? We are about to do 50 or hit our 50th one. So go and check that out and hit me up again in the comments below or anywhere else. Go and follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, make your pick. We're 
all over the show, every social media platform that's important enough anyway, in my regard. And please come back next week because I would like, would actually love to help you change your life for the better. So thanks for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. See you later. Alla Gators.